I appreciate God once again and I appreciate every one of you. And I want to tell you again, I'm happy to be here. And I'm so glad I'm fulfilled for what you are doing. Today, day 28, we will be speaking today on swearing through our mouth. And without wasting time, people of God, I want to quickly point your attention to the story of a young man, an Amalekite, swear through your mouth. I'll be pointing you to the story of a young man, an Amalekite, and who had an encounter with King David. Do you remember that Saul was killed in the in a battle? Do you remember how many of his children fell the same day with him? Maybe the only thing you remember was that Jonathan died. But no, it was not only Jonathan. Three of his children died the same day with King, King Saul. Look at 1 Samuel, the last chapter of 1 Samuel, chapter 31. 1 Samuel, chapter 31. And look at verses 1 to 6. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines. And fell down, slain in Mount Gibra. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan, number one, Abinadab, number two, and Mechichua, sons of who? Of Saul. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. Then Saul said unto his Ammon bearer, Draw the sword and trust me through therewith. Let this uncircumcised come and trust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer will not, for he was so afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he, that is the armor bearer, fell likewise upon his own sword and he died with him. Verse 6, so Saul died. And his three sons, and his armor bearer, and all his men that same day together. Just go with me to Second Samuel, chapter one, and come and see a story of a man. The story of a man. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites. Do I remind somebody that what was the instruction of, of God to Saul, which made God to remove his glory from Saul? God said, Saul, my king, go before the Amalekites. Every one of them, their city, their children, their cattles, everything to be destroyed. But Saul went there. He destroyed few. He kept the beautiful things. And he kept the king. And he kept the treasure. He kept beautiful cows. Kept beautiful cattle. And he kept the king of Amalekite. You will soon see. It. And that was the assignment that David went to complete. David went to complete the assignment that was given to Saul. You will soon see what God is bringing out in this matter. Right. And David said unto him, sorry, second verse, it came to pass on the third day that behold, a man came out of the camp, camp from Saul with his clothes rent and ate upon his head. And so it was when he came to David and he fell to the earth and did obeisance. And David said unto him, from whence comest thou? And he said unto him, out of the camp of Israel, I am escaped. 
And David said unto him, How went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, That the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, How knowest that Saul and Jonathan his son be dead? And the young man that told him said, I happened by chance upon Mount Gibwa. Behold, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen follow hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called on unto me, and I answered, Here am I. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. Did something ring bell in your mind? An Amalekite that God said Saul should wipe out is the same Amalekite that he saw in the battle now. I am an Amalekite. And he said unto me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me and slay me. For anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him and slew him. Is that correct? Look at verse 16 because I don't want to waste time today. We have so much to do. Look at verse 16. When he told the king, David, do you know how many years Saul has been waging war against David? Do you know how many times he has tried to kill David? And so that Amalekite of a, of a boy thought that he was coming for favor before David. And he said, I have killed the king. He thought that the man was going to celebrate that I have killed your enemy. Look at verse 16. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head. For thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. Your blood is upon your head. And what did he say immediately? He said they should fall on him because whoever killed by the sword will equally by the sword. But this man, his mouth did not say the correct thing. That is what we want to establish this evening. A story is told in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 to 16, which I just gave you the account of the dead of King Saul and Jonathan his son and two other sons. And Amalekite went to tell King David that he killed King Saul and brought the crown. He brought the crown on the head of Saul and the bracelet. You know what they call bracelet? This thing that is in the arm. He brought them from Saul to King David. Verse 16, the, the, Lord, the King David now said, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. Yeah. The correct story, which I told you first, was that Saul killed kill himself since he already sustained injury and he died. And he died with Jonathan, he died with Abinadab, and he died with Machichua, all three sons of Saul. Here, the mouth of the Amalekites deliver him to the gate of hell. Do you see that? Instead of swearing high into favor and position, what he got was death. No wonder the Bible tells me that our tongue, this tongue, is full of life and can equally be death, which is the story you have seen. But somebody here will say, oh, why should it be? The same Amalekite that Saul was given instruction to wipe out is the same Amalekite that wrote the last chapter of the story of King Saul. I stand on the word of God to declare unto you tonight that the enemy will not write the last chapter of your life. I thought you were going to say amen. The mouth is a very important part of our body. With the heart we believe. 
and we confess what we believe in the heart with our mouth. The greatest of all wonders is recorded in Genesis chapters 1 to 31. God did everything in the world. He created everything. The creation of the entire universe by the word of the mouth of God were done. And God said, and all that God has said came into being out of nothing and they were very good. They were very what? Good. The words you speak or produce determine the wonders in your life. Very many of you will not know the type of person I am until I speak out. Isn't it? So many of you already know that Bishop Bada is a testimony. I am not supposed to be alive today. But God knew I would be speaking to the family of the cathedral family in, in Wari. And that was why he preserved my soul since 1976. This is seen in the lives of the apostles. That is the word of God. Who experienced signs based only on the words they spoke. In Matthew chapter 16, they spoke the word of God and it came to pass. In Acts of the Apostles, they spoke the word of God and it came to pass. There was a lame by the beautiful gate and Peter spoke the word of God and it came to pass. Speak the word. Speak the word. Friends, until you say it, do not expect it to come to pass. You want me to say that again? Assuming that evening, that evening, when Peter was entering into the temple and the lame man who was on the ground was looking at them. He was looking at them asking for silver and gold. But Peter said, silver and gold I have none. But what I have, the meaning of that what I have is that what I have is bigger than silver and gold. How I wish you know what you have. What you have is bigger, is better than silver and gold. He said in the name, what I have is the name of the almighty God. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, who I serve. You name, get up and walk. Did the Bible record that he touched the man? But the word of God, the unction of the Holy Spirit, the power of God... For the gospel of Christ is the power unto salvation. The word of God healed the man. And the man got up. Assuming the disciples, the apostles did not say it. Will the man get up? But because they said it, God honored it. My brothers and sisters, as terrible as death possesses to be, it also responds to the command of your word. It responds to the command of your mouth. Look at Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Let somebody read it quickly. Proverbs 18, 21. Are you there? Proverbs 18, 21. Yes, sir. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes, sir. Oh, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The death, the 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 power, death and life are in the power of tongue. Those who love it, those who love life, will have life. And you will confess it and you will have it. You confess it, you have it. The challenges of life can be subdued by the sand. What I mean by the sand is by the world. It is your instrument of command. The word in your mouth. Is your instrument of command. The word in your mouth is your instrument of command. I have seen somebody before. You know the person I'm talking about. Who the, the prophet came to him and said, Look, you have been ill of boy. And God said, I should go and tell you that you will not get out of this bed until you die. What happened next? What happened next? He turned his face to the wall and said, no, I will die no death. No, God, I won't die. God, change it. I will not die. What happened next? They changed the date of his death. 
Do you see that in the Bible? Do you think the same God that changed that dead is still alive? Do you think he can do it for you as well? Claim it and it is yours in the name of Jesus. The power of life and death is in the, is in the tongue. The tongue, your, your word, is your instrument of command. I will be reminding you. Your word is your instrument of command. The instrument of command. How do you speak to God except you speak out? How do you? That is the problem I have with the Anglican church, people of God. I don't love people to say it is silent prayer. When I was young, in the cathedral, I'm from Ikare in Ondo State. We had an old archdeacon, Papa Olowomeye. Papa Olowomeye was so old, so on the prayer desk, he normally give out these long vesicles and responses. He would give out to the lay reader. And anytime the lay reader is doing that, Papa will leave the prayer desk, he will go to the altar. Once he places his head on the desk, he slips off. We knew that because in, when I was in primary four, I was in the choir. So as soon as we want to say the grace, we will always say the grace in unison. Somebody will quickly go to the altar to go and wake him. Papa, we are true. At the Shetan. Yes. So he will now wipe his face and say, oh, so you are true. So soon. Please, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And violence has taken it by force. Let me tell you the program of Satan. Anybody that comes into the world, anybody that comes into the world, the day you are coming into the world, there is a program of God for your life. There is a purpose for your life. There is a reason why you were made. There is a reason why you were sent to where you are going. There is a reason for your training. There is a purpose for your training. There is a reason for every step you take. But Satan will always want to counter it so that you don't get to your throne. Are you listening to me? The assignment of Satan is to block the people of God not to get to their throne. And that is the work of Satan. And I stand on the word of God to say to you tonight, either Satan likes it or not, either his agents likes it or not, you will be celebrated. Yeah. I say you will get to your throne. Yeah. If there are people that all over the world, I am not talking of somebody that is celebrated in worry, no. I am not talking of somebody celebrated in Delta State, no. I am saying that if you are already being celebrated nationally, you will go international in the name of Jesus. Hey, if you don't rebuke Satan, how will he flee from you? I have seen Christians who I call ordinary Lightweight Christians. Lightweight Christians are those who operate in little faith level. And they play with Satan. Oh, Satan, leave me now. And Satan will say, I want to play with you a little. Leave me now. I want to play with you a little. No, Satan does not understand the language of pleading. No. The language Satan understands, according to the word of God and in practice, is... When you open up your eye, you rebuke Satan and Satan will flee. Even Jesus needed to rebuke Satan. Even Jesus needed to do that. Do you keep quiet when you want to rebuke? Are you gentle when you want to rebuke? Do you rebuke? Or do, you, do you look gentle when you are rebuking? How many people will look gentle? Oh, he's a gentle man in the battlefront. We are in battle, my brothers and sisters. And we have to be who we are supposed to be to win the battle. Instrument of command, that is the word of your mouth, is an instrument of winning your battle. And I said to you, know it. My sister, I said you know it. The words you speak are destiny molders. You can give shape and color to your life. By the sound you produce. Victory or defeat, the power of life and death lies in the tongue. 
If you, if you agree that, oh, you are going to die because somebody has told you you are going to die, it is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. And I should tell you this story right now. A young man left Nigeria and he traveled to Britain. He got student visa. And he got scholarship when he got there. Seven days. After seven nights in Britain, he started having every night there must be nightmare. The first night, he saw that people were pursuing him. And all the people that were pursuing him, large in number, they don't have heads. You cannot see their head. If you don't see the head of somebody, how do you, how do you recognize the person? They were pursuing him. Instead of getting up to, to, to pray and intercede, he got up, he took his diary, and he wrote it down. The next night, those that were pursuing him yesterday, they now turned to masquerades. Different types of masquerades from Nigeria, they were now pursuing him. They pursued him, he was tired. And where he sat, and he thought that they have gone, they just came suddenly again. He shouted, hey! And he woke up. He took his diary. He wrote it down. The third, day, the third night, those who were pursuing him, they now came in their real color and sense. This time he was able to identify them. He saw the old woman in his father's house. He saw others around their compound. He woke up. He wrote it down. The fifth day, they brought a casket. He saw the casket. And he was afraid. He woke up. He wrote it down. The sixth day, they banded him. They banded him together. As if the way they band and tie a corpse. And they put him in the casket. When they wanted to now nail the thing, he suddenly woke up. He woke up. He wrote it down in his diary. Finally, the seventh night, they came. And they sealed the whole thing. It was when they brought his corpse back to Nigeria. They picked his diary and saw what he was writing down. One after the other. I tell you, my sister and my brother. You don't need to run to Port Harcourt To go and look for a man of God. You don't need to run to Benin. To go and look for a prophet. You don't need to run around looking for anybody. I tell you, if you come before the altar of God. And you cry unto him. He said, when you open up your mouth and you call upon me, I will answer you. How many people have called upon him? Do you know what people do? They call upon God in the day of trouble. In the day of celebration, I dance before God. Dance before him. Call upon him. Celebrate him. How many of us have woken up and, and declare all night for yourself? Not your husband. Don't bother him. Not your children. Don't bother them. Me alone and with God this night I will settle the matter. How many of us? How many of us declare fasting apart from what the church declared? How many of us are going through every week? 52 weeks in a year? How many times is heaven noting your, your sacrifice? Is your voice known in heaven? If you don't open up your mouth, how will your voice be recognized? Your word? The spoken word that comes from your mouth is your instrument of command. And that is your instrument of winning the battle of life. Ah, praise God, somebody. Let me quickly, people of God, because today is a day that we have to be fast with what we are doing and what we are saying. This is seen in the lives of the apostles. They they will call upon God in trouble and out of trouble. God made the world out of nothing. The power of the spoken word played a prominent role. And in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 3, the word of God said, Through faith we understand that the whole world were framed by the word of God. He said, Let there be light. And there was light. He said, Let there be water. And there was. And he divided them into two. One on top and the other one below. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. So that things that are seen today are not made of things. Are not made of things which do appear. 
they came out of nothing. Out of nothing. Beloved, you are a child of destiny. I say you are a child of destiny. You cannot afford to live like a destitute. No. Somebody who just came and gone and nobody remembers the person anymore. No. You were made for a reason. You were sent on an assignment. The assignment is a sacred one. No power, no force in this world will block you out from carrying out the assignment of God in the name of Jesus. Speak good words. Tell your neighbor, speak good words. Because God not only watches over his word to perform it, but also confirms the words you speak. Speak good words. Speak good words. Speak. Speak. There was a lady who was speaking in the altar. Even the high priest said, Oh woman, when will you leave this you are drinking? I am talking of Hannah. That was a day that Hannah said, Today, this matter is settled. It was a day Hannah said, Enough is enough. He went to the altar and he heard it was like somebody holding the leg of God. Today, my name must be removed from the list of burying women. Today, and the woman opened up. The woman, it, was it a silent prayer? It was not. Speak to God. Speak to heavens. Let your voice be known in heaven. Let them know that, oh, my son has not prayed this morning. My, my daughter has not prayed this morning. Because the moment you wake up, my grandmother told me that before you speak to anybody at all, when she wakes up, if anybody is coming around or somebody has come to come on the door to wake her up, to wake her up, my grandmother will say, You know the meaning of that? I have not spoken to heaven. I must speak to God first before I speak to any human being. You speak first to God and if you are always speaking to heaven by 5.30 in the morning, even God will be waiting for your voice in the morning because you have not said good morning, Jesus. And do you know, when you operate in the realm of the Spirit and anytime you speak unto God, particularly those of us who first celebrate God and give thanks unto Him, anytime I'm reading through Psalm 18, I look at the level that David was operating. I love you, O God, my God. You are my helper. You are my comforter. You are my, my rock, my foundation. And he praises the name of the Lord. And the more you praise God, the bigger the head of God gets swell. And it is as if God is asking you, tell me, my son, what do you want me to do this day? Tell me, my daughter, what do you want me to do this day? But you wake up, you have not spoken unto God. Why do you speak unto man? Let your voice be known in heaven. It is what you speak. You speak good things. I am aware that many of us do excessive joke. Joke. That must not be done. Excessive joke. That should not be heard from the mouth of a Christian. Because out of the abundance of one's heart, the mouth speaketh. You cannot speak what is not coming from your heart. And if your heart is filled with the word of God, if your heart is filled and overflowing with the message and the oracle of God, you will be speaking the word of God from your mouth. If something suddenly happened, whose name will you mention? Now some people will mention the name of their late father and their late grand grandmother. Four things, four things that you must note. Four things, not this one, four things. You must note about the potency of your word. Four things you must note about the potency of your word. I don't have time. Number one is God confirms your words. God confirms your words. Isaiah chapter 44. Look at it, 44:26. Isaiah 44, 26. 
You are too slow in opening your Bible. Isaiah 44, 26. That confirmed the word of the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers that said to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. It was a word that is being spoken, and God confirms it. When you speak word to God, it is confirmed. Do you remember how many years Abraham was without a child? And Abraham believed the word of God and he reminded God. Did it not come to pass? God has not changed. And he will and he will not change. He will do that which he has promised. God confirms your words. That is number one. Number two, your word put the angels to work. The moment you speak it, it puts the angel to work. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Quickly, who is reading it for me? Your word put the angels to work. Yes. Aha. Aha. The angels carry out your words. Whether positive Aha. Good. Let your mouth speak what is not correct. And what you speak and you will not do. The angels of God, the moment you speak it, they work it out. How many of you know that there are angels that are assigned to you? Do you know that angels are assigned to you? How do you know? Do you see them? You don't see them. Do they speak to you? But how do you know? Because you know. Because you were told. Apart from telling you, has any one of you, maybe in the afternoon or in the night, it happened that you are alone and you seem to be afraid. And maybe those of you who work in the farm in the afternoon, and at times it looks as if somebody is following you. You look back and you cannot see the person. Has it happened to any of you before? Maybe you are alone in the house. In the whole house you are alone. And you came downstairs to lock the central door. And you are climbing up. It looks as if somebody is following you. And you look back, there is nobody. Heaven, as before you came into the world, there were angels that were assigned to you to keep you. One moving ahead of you one coming behind you. When Jesus was talking and he was quoting Psalm 91, when Satan was tempting him and they said, they took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, jump down. Before, because it is written that the angels of the Lord, we, we hold you they mean the angels that were designed to be his guide and be his protector. If you don't know it before, know it today. That the presence of the Lord, represented by the angels of God, they go ahead of you and they come behind you. You are well secured. I say you are well secured. Now, quickly... Number three. Sorry, let me finish this number. Angels will turn on when you speak words of uncommon faith. When you speak words of uncommon faith. And I want to remind you, there was a situation in Daniel chapter 3. You still remember Meshach? You remember Shadrach? You remember Abednego? And the king said they should bow. And the children said, we are not going to bow down to you. He said, I'm going to kill you. They said, even if we die, even if the God we serve did not come down to save us, still we will not bow down. How many of you remember that the same king called his minister? He said, come, 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 come. Did we not take three people, throw three people into the furnace? He said, I am seeing four people, oh, 
And the symbol, the look of the fourth one is looking like the son of the most high God. I think God opened up his eyes to see that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are well protected. Not even the furnace will have authority over them. And it is the same thing unto you. But they confirmed it. They didn't keep quiet. They mentioned it. And they put the angels at work. If you want to read that, you read Daniel chapter 3. Your words are powerful. That is number 3. Your words are powerful enough to command signs. Because every word, every word that comes from you is a seed. Every word that comes from you is a seed. What you are hearing me saying now, I am sowing the seed of righteousness into your life. I am sowing the seed of, of uh, future into your life. I am sowing the seed of life into your life because what you hear, and that is why the Bible said, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Because the word you hear that is being spoken is a seed that is being sown into you. And what is a seed? A seed is an ordinary thing looking ordinary. Ordinary, very little. And it may dry. But once that seed is, is sown, is, is planted, and the seed germinates, what do you see from it? From ordinary seed, you see a big tree. Not only a big tree, the tree that you see will bring fruits. And then this, the, inside the fruits, there are other seeds. Somebody understand it? Are you sure you understand what I've said? Hey, so you now know that it is not Christianly to call your, your child, to abuse your children and to curse them. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? It is not Christianly because you know that whatever you say, you are sowing a seed. You are sowing a seed. You are sowing a seed. In Luke chapter 8, verses 11 to 15, Luke 8, 11 to 15 is a long one that every word that came forth from the mouth of the Lord is like a seed. And the word of God is seed. As a true child of God, therefore, your words are also seeds. Luke 8, 11 to 15. But you can read this with me. Psalm 80, 82, verse 6. Read Psalm 82, verse 6. What did he say? Psalm 82, verse 6. Where's my brother? I said, ye are gods. Who are the ye that God is referring to? You. The you are gods that are there is a small g. Look at it in your Bible. It's a small g. Yes, go on. We all are sons. Don't tell me you are a daughter. You hear me? Don't tell me you are a daughter. God does not recognize what you are saying that, oh, this is a male, this is a female. For unto us, a son, a, a child is what? A son is given. A son is given. If you go to court and you see the very senior magistrates, it is not her worship. It is his worship. It is pattern after the program of God in the Bible. Most of the laws you see are from the Bible. So, God has given a son. What is the meaning of a son that is given? That is a seed that is sown with a destiny. A seed that is sown with a destiny. And I say you will all get to your destiny in the name of Jesus. Since whatever a man sows is what he reaps, the things you say are what will happen to you. So begin to say exactly what you want to see. Do you hear me now? You begin to say exactly what you want to see. Because until you say it, you won't see it. Until you say it, you will not see it. Begin to say, because whatever you say, you are sowing the seed. Begin to say what I saw a man, he has three children, and all the three children, he called them by the name of the profession he wants them to be. <laughs> there is number one that he called a doctor. 
there is a professor among them. Another one is a medical doctor. And the third one is an architect. And so he called them, even when they were small as babies, he was calling them. That is exactly what it is. And that is what it should be. Praise God. Number four, your words give control over all opposition. What do I mean by that? Your word gives control over all opposition. Every Christian that closes their mouth is always a victim of oppression. Every Christian that closes their mouth is a victim of oppression. If you do not rebuke Satan, will he flee from you? If you must enjoy the supernatural blessings, we are rounding up now. If you must enjoy the supernatural blessings, because your root is supernatural. How many of you know when you were coming to the world? I told somebody that if God told me, if I was consulted, that, oh, you man, I am sending you to the world. I would tell God I don't want to be born in Africa. <laughs> I would not want to be born in Africa. But I was not consulted. I was born in the world. I saw myself in the world. But do you know what I know? I know that I am not here by accident. And if I am not here by accident, it means there is an unseen power that brought me into the world. And this unseen power has said that I will not forsake you, nor fail you. And repeatedly he said it. He said it repeatedly. He said it repeatedly. Have I not told you that I will not fail you, nor forsake you? Have I not told you to be strong and brace up? Problems will come. But all the problems will bow before you. I say every problem of the world will listen to the voice of God concerning you. They will all bow in the name of Jesus. If you want blessings, if you want supernatural favors, what do I mean by blessings? You all know what blessing means. Say, God will bless you. Say, amen. God will bless you. You Say, amen. If you want supernatural favor, I spoke of a young man who was going on a journey yesterday and an angel came to meet him to say that, oh, young man, welcome. Where are you going? He said, I don't know where I'm going. And that one said, I have been sent to go and direct you. Since you don't know where you are going, any of the routes will take you to nowhere. Any will take you to nowhere. But there are people that receive favor. Anywhere they go, anywhere they go, favor will locate them. It is not because that, that because I am a Christian or because I am this. No, it is because it has been designed for them. It does not mean with black man alone. No. Somebody will just walk into the office and say, look, God has said that the man will not have peace until you are blessed. You see that? The man will not have peace until you are blessed. I listened to a, a testimony that shook me. In December, a young man called everybody together in his office. He said, sorry, we hardly pray together in this office. But he went to the CEO and told the CEO that, please, just give me this opportunity. This last prayer before we close for December, and that is close to Christmas, and until New Year, that it is not certain that everybody that leaves for Christmas and New Year returns to the office. And it was that that struck the CEO, and he said, okay, let us pray, call everybody. And when CEO himself is knocking at the door of everybody, come out, come out, we want to pray, who will stay behind? Eh, nobody will stay behind. Because the CEO, you see why it is necessary that God lifts up his own people. So because once they are in an office, the office is blessed. And why you and me should target 
everybody that matters and speak the word of God to them. Don't go about take their money and leave them to go to hell. Their money is not the major issue. The major issue is their soul. Speak the word of God to them. The CEO went around and called everybody together and said, this man wants to lead us in prayer before we close for Christmas. And the man prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for everybody. From that day in the night, the CEO said, the man who even prayed for us, I have not done anything for him. And asked me, what was the level of the man in the office? He was only a messenger. I have not done anything for this man that prayed. Because his mind, something was telling him, it is the prayer of this man that made everybody to return in peace in January. Because so many people that left their offices for the village and for the new year and Christmas, many of them do not return. Many died in accident and so many. And he called the man in the office. In the morning when he came and that one took the bag and cleaned the office and he said, Oga, do you mind if we pray together? I will, I will be brief. Just small. I said, I thank God for you for the life of my Oga. I thank God for the establishment. God, we invite the Holy Spirit. This office this day, the Holy Spirit will rule and we soak everywhere with the blood of Jesus. We take power out of the hand of forces of darkness. The man said, Amen. And the man sat down and the Holy Spirit reminded him again, I have still not done anything for this man. The man was staying in a Keja area before the company finished the official house for the CEO in Ikoyi. And the house that the man was staying in Ikeja is empty. And the CEO said, Mr. Man, where are you staying? Ah, he now said it is Papa, Papa around the Lagbado area, far, far. Ah, you come to office early, you know? He said, yes. He said, do you mind if I give you my house in Ikeja? That one said, mind it. <laughs> are you saying if I mind it? He said, okay. Go to the car. Tell the driver to give you the bunch of key. And he brought the bunch of key from the car. And he said, oh God, this is a bunch of key. He said, the house that I packed out from in Ikeja, today belongs to you. The man said, it is as if I don't hear you. Am I dreaming? Me. Up to this morning, a tenant. And then my identity changed. When I mention supernatural favor, you must begin to understand what I'm saying. And the man went to the house through, through. Do you know the, the furniture in the house, the bed, the seat that was meant for CEO before? Because CEO was moving, they carried all the furnitures from there and took it to another officer. So the house was just a house without furniture. Even the furniture alone, that man cannot afford it. Cannot afford furniture. So he came the next day and said, Oh God, I don't just know what to say. I don't know how to thank you. That one said, when he finished the prayers for the second day, he said, Sorry, I, I remember in the night that there were no furniture in the house. He said, No, I don't even bother about it. He said, No, 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 just hold it. In the new house that I have moved to, the furniture there, I don't like it. The cuttings, the this, 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 this. So do you mind if we carry the furniture from Ikoyi? Is there anybody here tonight who has heard that this God that we serve can change your story and make it an overnight affair? I therefore declare unto you today supernatural favor will locate you. Every blessing from the throne of God that is yet to come. Every story, super story that, the, that will change this generation. Every testimony that will make the world to celebrate you. 
they will surely locate you this month in the name of Jesus. Amen to the Lord. You need to mind what you say about yourself. Yes. Supernatural open door. Supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural victories. Supernatural successes. They will surely locate you in the name of Jesus. You need to mind what you say about yourself. You need to mind what you say about your business. When you ask from some people, how is your business? They said, I'm managing. I am managing. If you say you are managing, the person did not finish the thing. It is equal to say, you are not only managing, you are passionate, it's leaking. You are passionate, it's leaking. When they say, how's your business? Oh, I praise God. Is it different? Is it different from the first one? So when they say, how's your business? Oh, I praise God. How's your husband? Oh, I give God all the glory. The man is the reason for my assistance. How are your children? Wonderful. We are waiting. I am waiting to call you to come and celebrate with me over my children. That is different from how are your children? Mm, don't mind them. Don't mind them. Just forget about the children. The confession of your mouth. Because out of the abundance of one's heart, the mouth speak it. The mouth speak it. Until you change your tactics. Until you change the words of your mouth. How is your marriage? Oh, we celebrate you today. We remember it is uh, five years that you got married. How is the going? Uh, my brother, it is just necessary to marry. That is why I marry. And do I tell somebody here, there is no marriage that does not have their trials, particularly from the first year to the fifth year. Because the man is just getting to know you. You are just getting to know the man. Every marriage must shake. And it is only then you will be able to find your footing. And they now ask you, how is your marriage? You have lost every dignity of a child of God. You have lost what is supposed to be the, the, the positive confession of your mouth. You are now confessing negative. Negative. No way. From today, the children of the Most High God, who is on a journey, we will confess positive things. We will confess positive things concerning our children. We will confess positive things about our business. And what we confess will come to pass in our lives. In the name of Jesus. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com God bless you.